It's the Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Pires coming to you from Baltimore. People in the U.S. just celebrated Labor Day, and some use the occasion to take stock of the situation of organized labor in the U.S. One unexpected analysis came from Lawrence Summers, Treasury Secretary under President Bill Clinton and Director of the National Economic Council under President Barack Obama. In his a column in the Financial Times, he wrote, Americans need unions more than ever. At the heart of his argument is that inequality has been increasing because workers and employees um, uh, in the U.S. have been loosening bargaining power relative to their employers. Joining us now to analyze the state of American labor is Bill Black. Bill is a white-collar criminologist, associate professor of economics and law at the University of Missouri, Kansas City. He is the author of The Best Way to Rob a Bank is to Own One. Thanks for joining us, Bill. Thank you. So, Bill, let's uh, start off with your reaction to Lauren Summers' FT article. Well, uh, certainly Summers is correct that there has been a catastrophic loss of labor union power and that this is uh, occurring at the same time that we've seen this astonishing stagnation uh, of wages. And so the middle class and big chunks of the working class uh, have uh, not uh, been getting significant wage increases for the over 30 years uh, now. And that has had uh, enormous consequences for not just the economy, but family structure, uh, and of course, for politics. So Summer's piece is, you know, just sort of mostly uh, make nice nice uh, with the uh, left wing of the Democratic Party on Labor Day. It doesn't cost him very much. He certainly wasn't a major proponent for union at uh, unions at any stage uh, in his career over the last uh, 25 years. Uh, Bill Clinton was uh, pretty famously hostile, uh, as were the New Democrats as a whole. Uh, among the leading funders of the New Democrats or key organizations was the Bradley Foundation. And anybody, any, any of our viewers from Wisconsin are likely to know the Bradley Foundation is the leading force, uh, even more than the Koch brothers, uh, attempting to destroy unions uh, throughout the United States. And of course, the other leading entity that uh, had a member of their board who boasted uh, that his goal in life was to destroy unions, well, his fo fellow board member, of course, was one Hillary Clinton. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, speaking of the Clintons and then following up uh, with the Obama administration, uh, where Summers uh, served on both, as I indicated. Um, in, uh, so does he not make the link between the kind of deregulation um, in terms of workers' rights uh, that he's been a part of through the Clinton administration, then the Obama administration, and what's going on in terms of inequality uh, that he writes about? No, and again, it's it's more than inequality. It's not simply that the rich are getting richer at a faster rate than the poor and the uh, middle class and the you know uh, lower middle classes, working classes. Uh, it's that there have been virtually no gains uh, in huge slugs of the American population, all the way from working class through much of the middle class uh, over 30 years. So that's far worse than simple uh, inequality. And it's combined uh, with, in many cases, a severe loss of wealth uh, out of the financial crisis uh, as well. Um, again, for these groups, not for the wealthy. Of course, you've seen that the, the wealthy uh, disproportionately put their money in stocks and similar investment vehicles that have done astonishingly well. So they have not only made up all of their losses, they have made huge gains uh, where you don't see um, similar recoveries. 
uh, for most of the middle and uh, working class. And this is uh, also, you know, caused a crisis in economic theory, which um, Summers article does mention that economists really can't explain with conventional economics how this is occurring. I mean, first, wages are supposed to be driven by productivity gains. And there are two big things about that. One, wages haven't remotely kept up, kept up with productivity gains. Instead, that money has gone to a combination of shareholders and in particular, the absolute top managers, the CEOs, the CFOs, the people in the C-suites through these massive uh, bonuses. So that's where the wealth, increased wealth has gone. But second, productivity gains, which the right, and that includes the new Democrats, uh, you know, the Clintons and the Gores and uh, Larry Summers of the world, promised us that their deregulation, that their hostility to unions was going to lead to dramatic increases in productivity, which they said would produce, produce uh, rapid increases in wages. Well, we're not, I've already said we're not getting those wage increases, but productivity instead of surging has also, the growth of productivity has fallen substantially uh, over the last 25 years. So, and so what they're doing um, that was supposed they promised us was going to be the greatest thing ever and was going to reduce inequality and be really, really good for the working class and the middle classes has uh, had exactly the opposite effect. And that's, of course, because their economic theories are falsehoods. Uh, they're basically uh, cover stories for laissez-faire. Um, and Summers never admits the link to his own policies, but he now says things like in this uh, op-ed about uh, labor, he said things about trade and saying, well, you know, uh, international trade can really suppress wages in a place like the United States. Well, he certainly never said that when he was Treasury Secretary or head of the National Economic Council under Clinton and Obama, respectively, uh, where he was pushing very strongly uh, for precisely those kind of trade packages. Okay. And uh, Summers also points out that uh, private sector unionization currently stands at 6.4%, two-thirds lower than in the 1970s and lower than almost any time in the past 70 years. Um, so could it be that the same reasons for which inequality has been increasing are this also the reasons why unionization has decreased? Well, there's been a war on unions. Uh, I uh, was born in Detroit and grew up uh, in uh, largely in Dearborn, Michigan, um, very close to where Walter Ruther was thrown off the uh, overpass by the Ford uh, goons. Uh, and such, and, and when I, uh, today's my 66th birthday. Uh, birthday. Happy birthday. Uh, thank you, but when I was uh, young, it was absolutely normal that people were in unions. Um, and now in the private sector, it's vanishing. It's, so it's basically, you know, one in about 16 workers uh, is uh, in a union, and that's falling all the time. And on top of that, I, I mentioned the Bradley Foundation already, there, there's an active effort to destroy public sector unions or to emasculate the, them in terms of having uh, any power. And that, of course, is the story politically in Wisconsin of attempting to ruin the public sector uh, unions as well. So, um, that attack is working. You can see that uh, the unions have tried pushing back in some of the border states where, uh, as you know, virtually all the new auto plants are opened in states that are very hostile under state law to unions. Uh, the, the UAW has attempted to organize, but in general, they lose uh, those elections with uh, the companies typically following policies that were championed by Bradley Foundation 
and by that Walmart lawyer director that I was talking about uh, that uh, are unlawful under the labor laws, but we have not enforced uh, the labor laws. And of course, the, one of the Trump administration's most recent actions was to uh, gut the efforts by the Obama Labor Department to ensure that workers would actually get overtime when they work overtime. Um, so wage theft is now openly uh, a practice at places uh, like Walmart and such. It, it is their, a key business uh, strategy. Um, the hostility to workers uh, is uh, quite extraordinary. I mean, even Ronald Reagan used to praise uh, labor unions, even if he wasn't, you know, much of a friend in, in practice, at least when he spoke, he spoke well of them. Now they absolutely demonize teachers unions uh, and try to make them uh, the worst folks uh, in the world. Uh, and they even went after the nurses at one point in California uh, and such. And nurses are among the most popular people in the world. After all, they're the ones helping you uh, and the, your loved ones uh, in the hospitals. That's how you typically see um, nurses in, in these circumstances. So we have gone a very long way uh, in the pendulum. As you say, it's about uh, as bad as it has been in modern history, where modern history goes back uh, 80 years. Right. And now on the conservative side, um, we actually did a story recently. Um, it's titled Conservative Policy Network Aims to Defund and Defang Public Sector Unions. And the interview we did uh, was with um, the current chair of our revolution, the uh, organization that Bernie Sanders started. And uh, in that story, we focus on the kind of efforts that are underway across the 50 states to deregulate uh, any forms of labor protection that there is. And I imagine the Bradley Foundation you mentioned is a part of that process. Now, what is on uh, the side of the unions? I mean, who's fighting for uh, trying to maintain and increase unionization in the country? And to me, it seems really, um, you know, the answer, the obvious answer would be the large labor unions, but they were in a effective at even getting EFCA passed under the Obama administration. Um, that leaves us very little hope, Bill. Your comments on that? Well, there is a whole lot less hope, uh, frankly. And so first, um, the golden era for unions was also only possible because it was the golden era for U.S. business dominance. This is after World War II. Uh, we had, in essence, uh, oligopolies that uh, dominated the world economy and industry after industry. Europe was, in fact, uh, devastated. And in standard economics, those kind of oligopolies make a whole lot of extra profit. And so those were circumstances where it didn't make sense to fight with the union, have strikes that would really reduce your profits. You had big enough profits, you could give a, a chunk to labor uh, as well and do just fine. So that era is gone and it isn't coming back. So that's part of what's going on. But beyond that uh, has been the Democratic parties under the New Democrats open hostility to labor. And uh, sometimes uh, hostility from uh, the left part of the Democratic Party as well uh, based on social stands of some unions. For example, police unions uh, had uh, recently, I think in um, Pennsylvania, uh, described uh, Black Lives Matter as a rabid animals uh, and such. So, you know, there are, it's not like there is uniformity in any portion of the Democratic Party um, or much left the left as a whole about unions. All right, Bill, I was hoping you would deliver better news for us <laughs> and uh, give us a sense of what can be done about increasing the levels of unionization in the country. 
Well, I can talk about that, but the answer is that is a very long-term struggle. And the first thing we need to do is reject the advice of entities like Third Way. Politico has just done this amazing article in which they refer to Third Way as center left and uh, talk about uh, in favorable terms this report that urges the Democratic Party to turn further against unions and pro-business, right? So the first thing we do need to do is uh, realize that Third Way is not a center-left institution. It is, as I describe it, Wall Street on the Potomac. It is completely uh, controlled by Wall Street and operates for Wall Street until the Democrats um, free themselves from co that kind of mindset of actively attacking labor, uh, they're never going to be a force that in conjunction with labor can begin what's going to have to be a 50-year process of rebuilding labor union strength. All right, Bill, I thank you so much for joining us. And uh, we'll take what you're saying to note, and I hope the labor unions, uh, the larger ones, are listening to the kind of organizing that they need to do. I thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. And thank you for joining us here on The Real News Network.